We're finally in the home stretch, Owl House fans. With the final episode, Watching and Dreaming, coming our way so soon, it's time for one last chance to throw all of our theories and trailer assessments to the wall and see what sticks. But I don't want to do this alone. I want to hear all your predictions, hopes, and theories in the comments. As for this video, I want to break down the last trailer and teaser poster, talk about some loose threads I expect to see addressed, and give my final predictions for this episode. Using the trailer, I'm going to split this into how I think the episode will chronologically unfold. So obviously, this one section picking up from where For the Future left off is the first thing we'll see. It looks like the Collector will easily interrupt the kiddos and Camilla celebrating string bean hatching. This leads me to believe that we'll get our reunion scene with King, Ida, and Luz fairly early on. Their joy doesn't look like it'll last long, however, because the Collector appears, ominously offering to show them some of his favorite games. Not only does the Collector turn Lilith into a puppet, he also apparently freezes Luz, King, and Ida in colorful see-through orbs. My guess is that while the Collector keeps the bad girl coven busy with his games, Emperor Bellos is elsewhere discovering that he can harness the Collector's magic to finish his goal of eliminating which kind. This sets up a ticking clock. Can King, Ida, and Luz sway the Collector to their side before Bellos succeeds? Based on the clip of Bellos jumping from rain while in the throne room, and these clips of the Isles adopting his soupy eyeball goo, I think that they're gonna ultimately fail, and Bellos will use the Collector's magic to corrupt the entirety of the Isles, potentially using its latent Titan magic to cancel out the Collector's powers. In the teaser poster for the episode, you can see a snake-like figure of goo plopping out of the Titan's skull, giving more evidence that Bellos achieves the godlike status he once claimed to have. This corruption of the Isles is likely the reason for Ida and King turning full monster mode and making their mouths glow like a couple of supercharged lightsabers. To me, the big key here is that this will function similarly to the Owlbeast curse, which was also a result of collector magic. Because this is similar magic, it'll also have a similar cure. Putting a pin in this, let's switch to the start of the trailer. The trailer opens up by showing us how far Luz has come, and what she's lost since deciding to join the Bad Girl Coven. As we watch Luz walk through the empty, darkened hallways of the Emperor's Palace, stopping to sit on Bellos' throne beneath the castle's giant pulsating heart, a voiceover from Season 1, Episode 4, The Intruder begins to play. During their very first magic lesson, Ida explained to Luz that magic comes from a witch's bile duct next to their heart. Two seasons later, we've obviously learned that magic also comes from the heart in the way that Luz intended it. Luz's love, dedication, unceasing curiosity, and kindness towards the Boiling Isles is ultimately what allowed her to become the witch she is today. I also think it's no coincidence that we're getting pieces of dialogue from the intruder, as this trailer's fixation with the light glyph has me believing that it'll be the key to saving the day and curing the Isles from Bellos' influence, just like the light glyph freed Ida from succumbing to her curse back in Season 1. Note all the lights in this scene where King and Ida are normal while the rest of the Isles is infected, as well as the twinkle lights in the poster. This is evidence that the light glyph is likely what's able to shake the Isles free and turn the tides against Bellos. My question is, what the heck is Luz doing wandering around Bellos' castle alone? And why is she dressed like Bellos? I really think that these scenes are occurring during a Collector-induced dream sequence, taking place in Luz's mind, much like how Hollow Mind took place inside Bellos's. Not only does Willow insist later on in the trailer that Luz has to wake up, I think it's possible that the Collector has imprisoned Luz, potentially as a puppet, and that these scenes featuring her in the Emperor's castle are part of a mental trap that she'll have to figure out how to escape from. I'm thinking something similar to when Ida learned to make peace with her inner owl beast. Until Luz can find a way to forgive herself for her own mistakes, she won't be able to get out. From the start of the season, we've seen that Luz blames herself for the damage she's done, and she's been carrying with her the notion that she has to cut herself off from the Isles after defeating Bellos and the Collector in each special. In storytelling, the final act of a story brings together two key elements, the external stakes and the internal stakes. The external stakes are clear. If Luz fails, Bellos will destroy magic and the Boiling Isles. I believe that the internal stakes are what we see depicted in these scenes. If Luz fails, she will hold herself responsible for that destruction, she will lose the people closest to her, and she will go back to being a lonely outcast. I also think that this outfit is ultimately a manifestation of the guilt she feels for helping Philip Wittebane and putting the entirety of which kind in mortal peril. Her outfit earlier, as Azura, is symbolic of Luz becoming her internal idea of a hero, while here, in Luz's darkest moment, she symbolically becomes her internal idea of a villain. My assumption is that once Luz overcomes her inner demons, she'll emerge with this thesis and antithesis combined, as herself a hero who accepts her inner flaws. 
We see themes of self-acceptance time and again in this series, and I think that we're about to see it one last time. That's not to say that the other characters won't rally to help Luz in the same way she supported them throughout the series. My belief is that her best friends have found a way into her mind palace to help her break the spell she's under. If I had to guess, prior to this, Luz makes a deal with Belos or the Collector to spare this quartet from harm, which ends up with her inside the mind prison. They, however, decide to pull a mind heist to rescue her, likely using Gus's illusion powers amplified by a Galder stone in a way previously thought to be impossible. We've seen that Gus's illusions can reveal hidden subconscious secrets, and I've been waiting for the Galder stone MacGuffin to return in some manner. So, it would make sense that Gus's arc culminates in him proving that illusionists are underestimated. I'm also betting on his earrings secretly being made from the glass of a Galder stone, so that the characters don't need to circle back to the Looking Glass ruins. Once inside the castle, we can see that there's a battle between Luz and her friends. Peep Luz's foot in this frame is evidence. My assumption is that Luz is pushing them away, telling them that they need to forget about her if they want to survive. But, as the Collector closes in on them while they're incepting Luz, Amity will be able to leave Luz with a reminder that light casts away the darkness. Seeing that her friends refuse to view her the way she views herself, and being reminded that light is super effective against curses and darkness, Luz will have the boost she needs to confront Belos and stop him. If I'm wrong and this doesn't happen in an altered state of reality, I still believe the themes will play out in a similar manner, just minus the Mind Palace. But this trailer barely scratched the surface when it comes to all the loose ends that this series has blowing in the wind. Since we know that the length of the season was cut down, I'm sure that plenty will go untied, but I've got some loose speculation for how some of them might be resolved. I know Dana and Co have filled this episode to the brim with what they can, so I have hope that at least some questions will be answered. For starters, how will the Bat Queen's whistle come into play? She initially gave Ida the whistle as a thank you for babysitting her children and because she owed Ida one from something Ida must have helped her with in the past back in Season 1. The last time we saw the BQ and her whistle was in Season 2's Hunting Palisman. Ida tries to give the whistle back as repayment for the Bat Queen's help in setting up Palisman Adoption Day, but BQ tells her to save it for another time. Well, the Collector and Bellows are both on the loose and I think it might be time to call in that favor. This whistle will likely be the Horn of Gondor for this series, something Ida uses in the final push to rally the Palisman and the Isles into stopping Bellos. Considering that Bellos has to go, but it's unlikely that Luz will be the one to kill him, I'm thinking that the Bat Queen and her Palisman are gonna turn the tables on him and chow down on some Bellos baguettes. Something tells me that the ghosts of Caleb and all the other Golden Guards will also play a karmatic role in landing the final blow to Bellos. That said, I think that Bellos' true undoing will be at his own hand. Let me explain. For pretty much the entirety of the series, the show has teased us with Eclipse Lake. In the very second episode, we get a phony prophecy that occurs at a celestial lake. And while this ends up being a hoax by Adagast, I've long believed that this is foreshadowing of how the finale will unfold. Eclipse Lake is key to Bellos and Caleb's backstory. And even though we briefly visit the location in Season 2, there are a few loose ends that I think could come back. Now that we've seen all the locations in the trailer, I'm now down to like a 40% amount of certainty that Eclipse Lake will return, but if it does, I think it'll be where Bellos ends up being defeated once and for all. My best guess is that after Luz breaks his curse on the Isles, he will retreat to Eclipse Lake in a desperate search for Titan's blood only to be met with the ghost of Caleb and the Golden Guards. Ultimately, Bellos will mistakenly harness Fool's blood and will suffer for his hubris. To add to this theory, I think that this might correspond with this still of the Collector in Snow. Eclipse Lake is in a snowy part of the Isles, so here we could be seeing the aftermath of Bellos' defeat. Now free from the Emperor's influence, this scene could be King and the Collector embracing each other and putting the generational feud of their parents to rest. If the Bat Queen and Palisman are also present in this moment, I think we might also get Hunter meeting his past self, Caleb, learning that he is technically related to the Clawthorns like many have suspected, and embracing the family tradition of carving Palisman. This would make Hunter the apprentice Del was searching for, and he could work towards offsetting the damage Philip did to the Palisman of the Isles. Then there's the question of the Titan we've seen in the Realm Between. I think we're all fairly certain that this is the spirit of King's dad who's been helping Luz from behind the scenes throughout the entirety of the series. I would be shocked if we don't get a scene where King finally gets to meet his spirit daddy. I'm also guessing that this spirit will in some way aid Luz or King in curing the Isles from Bellows, perhaps giving Luz the ability to cast the light glyph across the sky. In the aftermath, I think King's father will pass the official title of King of Demons onto King, and with the aid of Jean-Luc and his little rock friends, 
King will be tasked with rebuilding the Isles. We also have a bunch of Titan Trappers that worship the Collector to account for, so I'm thinking that the Collector and his followers could join in with King's Golems to rebuild the Isles in an act of diplomatic goodwill. In terms of character deaths, I think we're probably in the clear. Flapjack seemed like the big sacrifice of the season, and I don't think that any more death on the hero's side is fitting for the story that Dana's trying to tell. We might get a near-death fake-out by Rain, Ida, Amity, or Luz, though. I'd like to think that we'd get more from V and the other Basilisks arc, but I think that this will be left open. It'd be rad if V showed up at the end to trick Bellos into thinking he caught Luz, only to reveal that he caught her magic-absorbing doppelganger. Ultimately, though, I think V is going to get a footnote about a happy ending in the human world. Speaking of the human realm, I have a feeling Luz the Collector and King or his dad will be able to reconnect the portal between the two realms. Camilla mentioned having a mother old enough to need care and thanks to them, and V has a lot of human friends now, so I don't think that they'll want to move to the demon realm full time. But I also don't see Luz leaving her mother again to be with Amity and all of her friends. If a big portal isn't re-established, then at the very least, Del or Ida will gift Luz a portal door so Luz can have the best of both worlds as their happy ending. Those are just some of my theories and predictions for the Owl House finale, but I want to know what you're expecting. Will we see time pools again? Will we get a Hootie Ida origin story? Will we find out the truth behind the writer behind Azura? Will the Owl Deity appear? I'm Scarlet Wit, you're watching Whitney Vision, and stay tuned for our finale breakdown coming soon. Enjoy the final episode! Yay!